Okay, it's recording start. Now, inventory and warehouse management. This is talking about your warehouse. Because currently, we already passed through sales and distribution and material management. Now, sales and distribution will be decreasing your warehouse or your inventory count. Why? Because currently people are buying product from you. Let's say for example, when the bike zone purchased seven bicycles from GBI. So basically, in your warehouse, you are decreased in number of bicycle by seven. So warehouse management task is basically to make sure that the inventory is enough in place with their correct location address and also to make sure that every single shipping is being done correctly from the correct warehouse. Okay. For material management on the other hand, your stock count is going to be increased. Like for example, GBI is purchasing 200 chain locks from Midwest Supply. So inside your warehouse, depending on which plant, either is it Miami, San Diego or Dallas, the number of stock for chain lock will be increased by 200 and it is the warehouse management responsibility to make sure that those 200 chain locks are there inside the warehouse at their correct location whether is it on shelf whether is it on pallets whether is it on storage bin depends this is the part where we're going to be defining warehouse management is going to be defined how items are being stored where is it being stored how is it going to be moving out how is it going to be moved in now this one we can skip we can skip so basically here we're going to see some functionalities the organizational structure the master data and also the process here functionality organizational structure master data and also process okay functionality good receipt good issue picking packing shipping physical inventory so you're going to be stating that the item is no longer belong to you uh, is the item have reached the warehouse that is good received the item is already shipped out of the warehouse good issued picking you're going, you're going to be picking the material from their location inside the warehouse okay packing is going to be whether is it going to be on pallets, inside boxes, it's going to be shipping, it's going to be shipped from your warehouse and also you need to monitor the physical inventory inside that warehouse, whether the item is there or not. Is the item is in the correct location or not? Is it being stored correctly? Because currently, we in this case, we are talking about bicycles. Bicycles are basically just things that stay in put. It's bicycles. But let's say, for example, we are handling with something that is much more dangerous. Let's say, for example, flammable goods. Let's say, for example, if we are talking about flammable goods, let's say, for example, a warehouse that is keeping um, petroleum goods. Let's say, for example, cooking gas. Hmm. That will be dangerous. So you need to make sure that your warehouse is a, is able to cope with the materials that is being stored. If, for example, something that is flammable, then you need to make sure your warehouse is hazard free. You need to make sure that those gas is not blown into smithereens because of the way you manage your warehouse is incorrectly. So those are some of the main concerns in terms of warehouse. It's basically making sure that the items are being stored correctly, items are being moved up correctly, items are being moved in correctly. Those are the main three concerns of warehouse management. So we're going to have a look at the structure. This is an example of what is being, con uh, being used for us inside the case study. So basically, said, if you look at here, down here is the part 
there is the concern of uh, warehouse management. You have shelf storage that is on racks, on shelf. Uh, you have good receipt areas. You have pallet storage. You have shipping area delivery. You have stock transfer. So basically, that one we're going to go through uh, one by one, basically. So structure, it depends on the client. Client is GBI. Company code is US00. For US, plan is going to be either Dallas, Miami or San Diego. Storage location, uh, this is the part where is concerning about WM. Storage location is now in different shape between various stock of material in plan. It's either is it being considered as unrestricted use, quality checking, those kind of things. Warehouse number, if you have multiple warehouses in one plan. Let's say for example, okay, now, uh, there is going to be a lot of uh, terms that is you are maybe not familiar with. Okay, definite, a definite part that you're not going to be familiar with. But we're going to take an example of something that is much more simpler. Now, everyone here have already go, uh, sorry, not go. Everyone here has visited UMP library or some of you have never ever visited UMP library. Maybe that is, okay, that is a, just a rhetorical question. No one answer that. Hopefully, if you are, if, if you've never seen a library, go and visit one. Because currently, that is the most perfect, uh, it's not perfect, that is one of the suitable things that you have experienced that I can relate to when talking about warehouse management. Okay, library is a sort of a warehouse. What does it keep? Books. How do they keep them on shelf? How those uh, how does those shelf is being organized? Uh, you can see how is it being organized. It's on multiple floors, uh, multiple section with addresses on the books that is showing where uh, addresses or codes on the books that is being labeled, and those codes are basically representing their address and also the details regarding the books. That is how inventory management works. You're going to be also concerning on how the course is being assigned or usually in terms of this case, we usually use barcodes. Barcodes is going to contain all the information necessary in terms of stating how does those goods is being stored, where are those goods is being stored, how does those good needs to be handled when moving in, moving out? So you have storage type, storage section, picking area. Those are some of the things that is needed when we are talking about warehouse management. Don't worry, in the mafia, it's not really uh, all those in, all of this information not really one hundred percent will be usable for final assessment or the lab exercise okay even though we are seeing all of this information the information that are relevant for your final assessment will be based on your case study lab uh, on the lab case study not in this lecture lecture is just explanation warehouse door allocation zone uh, shipping point storage bin there is a lot of stuff inside warehouse management organizational structure, but we're going to be using those which are relevant based on the case study for IWM. So this one we can skip, we can skip, we can skip. These are some of the information that is inside w, uh, warehouse management master data. You're not going to be creating this storage bin master data this is how it's supposed to look like it has maximum weight total capacity of that storage bin uh occupied weight cat use so these are some of the information storage bin what are the things that can be stored inside those storage bin uh still talking about master data these are some of the information if you also notice there's going to be a lot and overwhelming information that is being used inside warehouse management because currently, as I mentioned earlier, 
the information that is being repre represented on each item, let's say for example, barcodes will be containing a lot. Uh, currently here, no, not here. These are still talking about information. Ah, I already passed that. Yeah, it's supposed to be, ah, here, sorry. This is the part where it's main concern. Storage bin master data. This is on the location of the goods itself, where you're supposed to be finding them. Material master, what is it being put in the storage bin? Hazard master data is basically if there is relevant information regarding if those material are hazardous so how do you supposed to handle those material and also finally batch master data this is used to detect if there is any batches of material that is produced by your company that has quality issue let's say for example now everyone familiar with issues that is being uh, that is being faced by Takata airbags. I'm guessing some of you notice that currently most of the Japanese car are currently recalling some model of car that has defect on those airbags. Now, those, uh, if you also notice, is being recalled based on manufacturing year on certain years, let's say for example, for the cars that is being produced by Toyota and Honda during the year of 2015 to 2018, that is for example, which means that the airbags that was produced during those years has defects. How do you know, how do you want to identify the airbags that are being produced during 2015 and 2018 is through batch master data. In terms of here, there is basically, in the real world, there is no way, there is no way basically for you to identify individual items that has quality issues. No, you cannot do that. It's not really realistic for now in the year 2021 is not realistic. We cannot identify which physical or which product, unique product, has quality issues. This is usually being handled through batch batches, which means that, okay, this airbag is being produced during 2015, uh, like that, bat, uh, 2015 batches. So if there is problems, quality problems related to a certain product is going to be checked through batches. Okay, not by individual. Cannot be done. It's impossible for the for the time being. Okay. This is talking about storage bin master data. This is talking about where does the storage bin is being located. Now, um, in terms of here, we cannot really uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to relate this to libraries. Now, libraries, there is no storage bin. It's been used. Storage bin, okay, I'm just going to show you an example. Okay. Simply storage bin. Okay. Simply storage bin, let us have a look at some example okay now if you look at here storage bin uh, do you see any bins in here no currently i'm guessing no everything there is a bin here now anyone here who noticed the bin what does the bin looks like small here why is this anyone would like to answer This small item here, down here. Or they are here. And in one here would like to have a go. Why is this? This is considered as a storage bin. Tissue. Pallets, basically. Wood, pa wood pallets. So, 
wood pellets can be defined as one storage bin is what will what it will be execute what will uh, how the railway is going to be executed is like this item are being kept here where's my mouse okay here items are being kept here on different shelf shelves are basically storage location for example storage bin are on pellets now what happens here is basically for warehouse management we're going to be uh, we're going to be putting one barcode there so basically that barcode will basically contain information on with which shelf those items are being put and on which level those items are being put that is for example in terms of storage bin but other than that there is also hmm, uh, we're not uh, this is not basically really helpful okay sample of storage bin this is for example it can be this way it can be this way it can be that way these are all considered as storage bin and for those of you who also notice there are some time if you go to watson there are storage bin came into the store which this is where they are restocking it they are not going to be keeping the storage bin inside inside the watson outlet themselves they're going to be returning them back to the warehouse depending on where it came from okay now storage bin these are some of the information we're not going to go through this material master we already done this this is the information that you define when you created your chain locks so these are the information that is being used hazard master data this is stating that if there are some material that is inside your warehouse requires you to handle it through certain methods let's say for example there are flammable liquids toxic material radioactive material this depends on what the company is keeping inside their warehouse for gbi i'm guessing the most hazardous item that they have for bicycles are basically if i if i could think of something it's going to be something that is related to lubricants that's going to be applied on the chains on the axle of bicycles so basically those are some of the hazardous master data that gbi could have so another thing that should be highlighted is basically how do you store it if there is water pollution flash flash point i don't remember what this one most of it we're not going to be involved with in terms of gbi so that is why these things is not really it's not really of a concern for this subject for the time being because currently we are handling with a case company that is uh, that is selling bicycles not much on hazardous material batch master data you want to see when does the item is being produced expiration date of inspection trading administration those are the type of things usually when we talk about master data is usually related to quality of the material itself the quality of the produced item whether is there any quality issue if there is no issue we're not going to be concerned with batch master data but if there is issue we need to track back on which batches are having those quality issues currently like for example the case where well, the case that we gone through just now was takata airbex now the processes itself now this is what we're going to be um involved with during the case study if you notice iwm case study there are four but the inputs that you need or base uh, the inputs or the work that you need to execute for those four case study are not that extensive it's not going to be as hard as sales and distribution it's not going to be as hard as material management yes material management and sales distribution there is a lot of input for here not really that much i'm going to show you how much is it for those of you who think oh this is going to be a lot there's a four case study okay we're going to go through sap afterwards we're going to see how much tracking that i can track when you do your inventory and warehouse management case study now inventory is talking about items that are coming in item that are coming in 
my term that are going out. That is okay. This is also going out, but this is on a different case. I'm going to explain to you later. Now, imagine for us there are base. Uh, these are libraries. We have here plan one is basically library from UMP Gamba. Plan two, let's say, is going to be library in UMP Pekat. Okay, so we have storage location that could be the shelf, the different floors of the library, the different shelf level of the library. So books for uh, books that are coming in could be from ven book vendor. Book vendor, we are buying it from, uh, we, are, we buy books from book, book vendor is going to put, to be put inside our library. So it's going to be certain different status for the books that's just arrived. Okay, now let's have a look here. We are talking about, okay, now I cannot really, um, how, um, um, okay, it's not here, but it's there, I cannot, uh, okay, hopefully you can understand, uh, hopefully you can, if there is problem, you can uh, refer back to the recording, play, uh, you can, uh, you can play back the recording later. Okay, now, Books that are coming into UMP library could be from vendor, book vendor, or it could be pro from production, which means that UMP is producing their own books. Let's say we have our own printing company. We have our printing plant, let's say, for example, in Kuala Park, let's say, for example, it's printing out books. So basically, we have our production plant. So UMP production plant. It could be from production, it could be from vendors. Okay, vendors, which means that we buy books from vendors. Production, which means that we are producing our own books. We are printing out our own books here in UMP. Maybe the plant location is different. Okay, what happens is basically the books come in from vendor and production is go to one warehouse, plan one. Let's say, for example, UMP Gambang in storage location. Okay, UMP Gambang, they are basically two floors. So basically, let's say, for example, the books just arrived is being put on the first floor at the back at the loading bay. It will be put for quality inspection. If, okay, after quality inspection, we notice the books are okay. So we put it under restricted use. When we put it under uh, unrestricted use, which means we are already put those books on the shelf inside the library. Whether is it on the first floor or the second floor? Okay, during this part here, also before it's being put in the shelf of the library, you're going to put some tagging on the books so that you know, so that in the future, you know where the book is being located. It can be taken out. And also when the book is needed to be put back inside the li library, you know where the book should be put back after it's being written by the student or the lecturers. So those are the things that is happening after it's, uh, uh, it's being labeled as unrestricted, uh, unrestricted stock, uh, use stock, which means that it can be used. Block stock, maybe there is a problem during the inspection process, so it needs to be returned back to the vendor or production. Now, let's say for example, the book need to be moved from UMP Tambang to UMP Pekan. So basically, this is what happens here. Uh, the book itself is being moved to plan 2. Let's say, for example, UMP Pekan, storage location 2. Let's say, for example, it's on the second floor of the Pekan library. So that is one way of stating it. So also, if you notice, uh, okay, I'm going to be summarizing everything later. And also, let's say, for example, in the future, the books is going to be rearranged again. The location itself is going to be rearranged. Those books need to be moved from the second floor to the third floor. Let's say, for example, there, those are the things that can happen in a warehouse that for our case is in the library. Now, Let's say, for example, this uh, the second floor is just for 
uh, is going to be for something. Uh, it's not going. It's not basically production. Let's say, for example, we moving down here. Every book that is on the third floor can be borrowed by the student, the customer. Okay, so that is how it is. This maybe this is not really one hundred percent. Uh, one hundred percent. Uh, reflecting how the library uh, conduct their business, but this is for example. So, these are some of the movement that could happen in terms of a book or a material in an organization. It could come from the outside. It could um, be moved internally, internally on different location of plant, on different storage location inside the same plant, and then it could be moved out. So those are the things that you, that warehouse management is concerning of. Items come in, how does the item is being used internally? Does the item need to be transferred internally in the company? Does the item need to be transferred internally inside a plant? And how the item is being moved out? That is why we have four case study for IWM. There is a case study for item comes in into the company. There is a case study for item is being moved around inside the company. There is a case study for item that is being moved out from the company. Item come in into GBI. Item move around inside GBI. Item being moved out. GBI. So those are the situational, uh, situational movement of goods for inventory and warehouse management. And the final one, inventory management, uh, inventory and warehouse management case four. There will be something on mistakes that is happening inside warehouse, which whereby items are being miscounted. The event, the physical inventory is showing small number, but inside the system there are still a lot of items. So that is one more case study that you need to go through. This part here, transfer posting, we need, we don't need to go through all of this. This is still none of our working. Okay. This is uh, before that. Yes, it's not really, uh, it's not really of our concern for now. But this. But here is the documentation that is need to be produced when items are being moved around. It's being called stock transport order. In material management, you have purchase order. For sales, you have sales order. So basically, similar fashion in warehouse management, you have stock transport order. Another document that is confirming that it is going to be movement of items in your warehouse, whether is it moving out, moving in, or moving around. So those three different situations. Okay, yes, now this is the good receipt, good issue. We're not going to be looking into this. This one we can skip. Transfer order, inventory, uh, not, much, not much there. Okay, so basically that's it regarding inventory and warehouse management. Uh, yes, currently, as I mentioned last time during the lecture, yes, here there are a lot of terms that is in the slide that you may not understand for now, but hopefully through the explanation and example that I gave you during the lecture, this could help you to understand more and also with the assistance of the case study that you need to do inside the SAP that will also assist you making sure that you see how does warehouse management is being used inside an organization. Okay, if you notice, we are at slide 34. 35 is uh, talking about s hana we skip, 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 we skip. Okay, thank you very much. So basically, that is what inventory and warehouse management is all about. It's just talking about how item moving in, moving around, and moving out, and how does the item need to be handled, and where does the item is being kept. Okay, 
uh, that is quite a lecture. Uh, before we're moving on to the midterm explanation, how does the midterm test is going to be conducted? Any question from the class? Boy, I do miss physical lecture. I could basically scribble on the whiteboard to explain more to you in terms of role playing during lecture so that we can explain it through acting of how business process should be. Hopefully COVID is not going to be that long anymore. Everyone is getting vaccinated and everyone can come back to lecture so that I can conduct this class in a traditional manner so that everyone can understand. Okay, so any question one related to warehouse management? Any question two? Any question three? Okay, no question, then that's it related to IWM. Stopping recording now.